Hi, this is Yuri Sabo and welcome back to my photography classroom. Um, this is the third class and I will talk about photo editing. Um, you can edit your pictures on your computer or on your phone. This time I will show you how to do it on your phone using the app called Snapseed. I put the logo up here so you can identify it and download it. This is a free app uh, and actually a brilliant one. Um, and you can use it on iPhone and Android phone as well. Uh, I put, put together two different classes about editing. This will be the first one when I will show basic functions of the app, uh, how to change your picture. And later on I will show uh, more options about portrait editing and other, other pictures as well. So let's get into it. Okay, let's go to Snapseed. When you first open the app, uh, it will ask you to open a picture as well. Um, mine has one already, so but just I'd let me show you. You can basically go through your shots and just tap on them and open them. But I have one here, we can work with this one right now. On the bottom of your screen, you will see three things looks, tools, and export. Uh, looks are kind of like presets. Um, let me just show you quickly. Um, you can choose a different one. I, to be honest, I don't really like it, but you can play around with it if you want. So let's go to the middle one, which is tools. Under the tools, I will show you in this video a few of them how to use and you can actually make dramatic change in your pictures. You can really improve them as well. Um, let's start with rotate. If you want to rotate your picture, here's the shot. So first of all, you can just push this one and rotate it around. Or if you want more subtle change, you can just do a little bit of turning. Uh, this is really really useful if you take a picture and let's say the horizon is a little bit off or you take a picture of a building and something is a little bit so you can make quite subtle change that's probably good here or you can just flip around with this one the picture actually i prefer this one so i probably keep this one now whatever you change you make you have two options you can just go back to the original one before the changes if you if you click on the x or you can click on the take and save it that's it okay so let's move to the next one next one let me show you perspective this is quite interesting especially for this shot so you have little arrows here and you can move the picture around it's almost like changing the perspective of the camera except that it does does it digitally yeah, digitally so you can see for instance in this picture it's really useful because i have the lines but they're not perfectly aligned so I can play around a little bit yes it's probably yes it's probably better I will crop a little bit maybe later so something like this and then I will just save it okay um, the next one I'd ex actually uh, the next one I should talk about the crop the crop function here you can start the default is free so you can just make any kind of cropping. You can just move the borders around or the, or the crop picture, you can move it around. Uh, or you can pick different options, preset options. So this is, goes to the original one. It means that it locks this proportion. And if you want to change it, change the proportion itself. If you want to change the angle of it and make it horizontal from horizontal to vertical, from vertical to horizontal, you can just push this part. And then there are different uh, DIN here, which is the A4 or A3 size. Uh, and then you can have square or three by two. So different proportion, depending on how you want to use it. If you want to use for Instagram or other options, then you can just uh, crop your picture to the right proportion. Um, I probably, hmm, I probably go back to the original. Yeah, let's leave it like this right now. I'm happy with that one. Okay, the next one is kind of fun actually, it's called expand. So what it does, it's, it can actually try to expand the picture. So this will basically <laughs> does an educated guess of the background and try to repeat it. So as you can see, it's not, for instance, it doesn't work with this one. It tries, but that's a fail so yes no thank you um it actually works really well for let's say um 
grass or sky, so when it's not really complicated, it actually can work. So it, it is useful when you, you take a shot of something, let's say a sky or something, and and you just need for the right um, right composition, you need a little bit more of it. You can actually easily expand. It's quite, it's brilliant for that. Okay. And now let's go to probably one of the most important one, uh, the tuned image. Here you have quite a few options. So when you go here, it starts with brightness, but if you move it up and down, you can have different options how to change the picture. I'll start with on the bottom from warmth. Um, this I will discuss a bit more details probably in the next editing class um, under white balance. But just quickly here, um, you can warm up the image, which means makes it a bit more yellowish colors or you can cool it down if it's a bit more blue. Um, here I probably I might go a little bit, a little bit warm it up a little bit. That's it. Okay, and then, uh, sorry, I need to go back again. And then the next one would be uh, shadows. What shadows does, it takes all the dark parts of the picture and changes only the dark part. So if I go up, I brighten up the dark parts as you can see, or I can make them even darker. So I probably, I just play around with this, I probably make it a little bit brighter. The next one is highlights, which is actually the very, the highlights, the, the bright parts, and it does the same thing. It either makes brighter the highlights or darker. Again, just play around a little bit. I leave it here. Um, ambience, this is this is um, a Snapseed specific one. Um, this is kind of like a contrast, but it works best for backlight. So I, I don't spend too much time on this. Saturation, um, well, if you push it all the way down, you end up with black and white. You take out all the colors, or you can make it much more saturated. So you push it up. Uh, be careful, it's easy. Easy to get too carried away. Then you see a lot of pictures on the internet which are way oversaturated. So if you have your picture, probably push it slightly up, not not that much. Otherwise, it ends up really unnatural. Okay. Um, contrast. What contrast does makes the darks darker and the highlights lighter. So it's kind of like does the two function I talked about, but does it with one. So you can see if I go. If I push it up, let's push it up all the way, you will see. So here the, the darks are much darker and the bright parts are much lighter. And then if I push the other way around, it's kind of flat. Uh, kind of, that's what you call kind of like a flat image. Again, just I'm just going to show you the difference. So push it a little bit up. Okay, and finally brightness. Now the brightness is, we talked about exposure in the last class, is overall the, the image how bright it is. So you can, in case you got it wrong during the shoot, here you can adjust it a little bit. So again, I just make this little change. So wherever you end up, you probably forget how the original image was. And here in the top right corner, there is like a button. So if you push it down, it show you how it was before. So you can compare. And when you finish, you can decide, okay, I want to keep this or I keep all the changes, or just go back to the original. So here I just keep it, and I saved it. Okay, so I think that's enough tools now. Let me show you the last part is to export. When you finish your picture, you have a few options here. You can share it, so it's, it brings up emails and different if you want to send a message to someone. Um, opening is quite useful because it will you can go to Facebook or Instagram or wherever you want. Um, um, or you can save or save a copy. Now the difference here, if you save a copy, you will have two pictures now. The original one and the new one, the edited one. You can do that, but it will double the Im your images on the phone. So I would recommend to save it because you probably like the pictures and you use it also in the future. Also, it's really good because if you open the saved image again, you can go back, in case you change your mind, you can actually go back to the original one or, or 
revert to the original uh, version of the picture. So I would recommend you to use the same one so you don't double the number of images on your phone. So let's see, we save this one. That's it. We let to modify. All done. Okay, I hope you liked the class and I hope you learned a lot. Uh, make sure that you use all the different tools. Uh, probably the best way to do it is to pick two, three of your images from your phone and start to play around with them. Let me know, send me an email and let me know how you found them and if you have any questions also. Make sure you subscribe if you like these classes. See you next week.